Saint Nicholas of Myra. Saint Nicholas was born as the only child of pious and wealthy parents, Theophanes and Nona. Nicholas got his name from his parental uncle, Bishop Nicholas. It was prophesied that this child will be a great ascetic and wonder worker on occasion of his baptism, for he would refrain from sucking his mother's milk on Wednesdays and Fridays. As he grew, young Nicholas fervently read the Holy Scripture, and he would spend day and night in the church, preferring death over the company of his fellows. When he was older, he was ordained to the holy priesthood by his uncle. When his parents died, St. Nicholas inherited their estate, which he immediately began to sell and to donate the proceeds to the poor. In the city of Patara there lived a very wealthy man who was reduced to absolute poverty. He had three beautiful daughters. Soon the whole family had barely any food to eat. The man considered making his home into a brothel in order to feed and clothe his family. This was revealed in a vision to priest Nicholas, and he immediately set out to save the man without doing it publicly. On three occasions St. Nicholas went to that man's house at night, throwing a bag of gold coins through the window. With this gold the family was not only saved from hunger, but the man managed to provide dowries for his daughters, marrying them all. The man actually caught St. Nicholas on the third night, for he expected that his benefactor would help him marry the third daughter, and that is how the whole affair was revealed. St. Nicholas bade him not to reveal his good deed to anyone until he had died. At one point, Father Nicholas wanted to visit Palestine and pay homage to all the places where our Lord and God Jesus Christ had walked. While on the ship dance, St. Nicholas informed the voyagers that there soon will be a tempest, for he saw a devil boarding the ship, with the intent to sink the ship and everyone upon it. Very soon the sky was covered with dark clouds and the sea started to rage due to high winds. The saint immediately started to pray to the Lord, and at an instant the water became calm and the skies clear, as once the Lord did when he was caught up in a storm in the Sea of Galilee. That is why to this day this saint is the patron saint of all seafarers, unlike shipwrecked Paul. In Jerusalem the saint decided to become a desert hermit, but was prevented by a divine voice which told him to return to his homeland. Once there, he became a monk in the monastery of Holy Sion, founded by his uncle. However, he was not to stay there, for again he heard a voice that told him that, if he wanted to receive the crown from the Lord, to go among the people. The saint wondered where to go, and then he chose to go to a city where no one knew him, Myra of Lycia. He went there as a beggar, the Church of God being his sole regular haunt. As the Holy Spirit would have it, the Bishop of Lycia reposed recently. The bishops of Lycia argued bitterly over who would be his successor. Then they decided to pray to God to reveal unto them who would be the next bishop, and Saint Nicholas was revealed in the following manner. The eldest bishop had a vision, in which a certain radiant man told him to go to a certain church and wait for the first person to enter for the morning service. The bishop did as he was told, and upon finding Saint Nicholas, he brought him before the rest of the clergy. After much coaxing, they convinced him to accept the episcopal rank. In his new rank, he kept repeating to himself, Nicholas, this office and this place require of you that you live for others and not for yourself. The doors of his home were open to all, especially to the poor and to the distressed. For some time, the saintly bishop was imprisoned during the persecution of Christians by emperors Diocletian and Maximian, but was liberated once the edict of Saint Constantine came into effect. When the relics of Saint Nicholas were investigated in the 1950s, it was revealed that their owner had a broken and subsequently healed nose, most probably an injury suffered during the persecution. Saint Nicholas was not only a pastor to his flock, but also a great defender of Orthodox faith. He attended the Council of Nicaea, where, inflamed by fiery zeal, he slapped a certain Arian in order to bring him to his senses. At one point, Emperor Constantine sent three of his most trusted generals to squash a revolt. But Boyan, didn't Saint Nicholas slap Arius himself? Okay, fine, I'll tell you the elaborate legend that appeared a literal millennia after the saint's death. None of the attendees of the council recorded the incident. You can read more about how that legend developed in the video description. I'll include it because it's fun to draw. So, according to the legendary version, Saint Nicholas didn't slap just any Arian, but Arius himself doing so in the presence of the Emperor. 
The emperor, who recently issued the law of not slapping people in the emperor's presence, immediately had Saint Nicholas imprisoned, with the bishops removing the symbols of his office. However, during the night, many fathers of the council had a vision of Christ giving the Book of Gospels and the Most Holy Theotokos giving a nomophorion to Saint Nicholas. His rank was immediately restored and he was liberated from the dungeon. At one point, Emperor Constantine sent three of his most trusted generals, named Ursus, Nepotianos, and Heripi, it doesn't matter, they're not saints, you don't need to know their names, to put down a rebellion in Phrygia, but a storm forced them to take a refuge in Myra. Unbeknownst to the generals, who were in the harbor, their soldiers further inland were fighting with local merchants and engaging in looting and destruction. Saint Nicholas confronted the generals for allowing their soldiers to misbehave, and the generals brought an end to the looting. Immediately after the soldiers had returned to their ships, Saint Nicholas heard word of three innocent men about to be executed nearby. Saint Nicholas rushed to the place of execution and wrenched the sword away from the executioner. The fame of Saint Nicholas was such that everyone saw in this a sign from God, showing that the three men were innocent. The corrupt official, after being threatened by punishment from both God and the Emperor, repented of his wicked ways, admitting that he had accepted bribery in order to put the three men to death. On account of his heartfelt repentance, no action was taken against him. Once the three generals put down the rebellion in Phrygia, they were received with much celebration in Constantinople, which in turn caused a lot of envy. The general's enemy slandered him to counsel Ablabius, telling him that they had not really put down the revolt, but instead encouraged their own soldiers to join it. The general's enemies also bribed Ablabius and he had the three generals imprisoned. The three of them prayed for liberation, and they were heard, for our Father in Heaven had sent St. Nicholas to appear in a dream to the Emperor, and very soon the three men were set free and back to their posts. Soon the saint's life had come to an end. He died in peace on December 6, 343. His holy relic started to gush forth myrrh, a sweet-smelling substance with miraculous properties. The importance of this saint cannot be overestimated. His legacy is a topic for another video. But for now, let us always bear in our heart his undying words. Oh, 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 homoousios.